Good morning, February 1st, 2022. Praise the Lord. Well, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord, we come to you in humility, knowing that, Father, a month has passed already. And as we usher in the second month of 2022, we humble ourselves before you. Father. Just ask that you are going to empower us today with your anointing and favor. Holy Spirit, God, we ask you to come and manifest yourself. We humble ourselves before you, God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. This is word of the Lord from 1 Corinthians, verse, chapter 1, verse 19. <coughs> we'll probably go through 21. This is word of the Lord. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. James Chen writes, Martin Luther said, without cross, Christianity is nothing. Amen to that. But uh, why is Paul writing this then? He says it is written in the Bible. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The word um, from NIV is the following. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. I like that. What about New Living Translation? It says, as the scripture say, so instead of saying it's written, it's in the scripture. <coughs> I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. What is I will destroy me in, in Greek? Apollo, not Apollos, but Apollo means to destroy fully. So God will not only destroy, but destroy fully the wisdom of the wise. What do you think about that first? Does that apply in your life? Do you trust in the wisdom of the world? Now be careful, because I'm not asking either or a question. This is both then. Because somehow that after 2,000 years of smartest people believing in Christ, now to say anything smart means that we don't really have faith. Because to say that I have faith means that I have no intelligence, almost. So Nietzsche is right. It has become the religion of the slaves. Right? Slaves don't think. Slaves don't process. Slaves so where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? A Holman Christian Standard Bible reads the following. Where is the philosopher? <laughs> where is the scholar? Oh, they're more direct, isn't it? Because uh, ever since uh, they've been against philosophers thinking that to be a philosophy major is to lose faith. I mean, that's why I was challenged when I became Christian. <clears throat> Freshman at Berkeley, they said, oh, don't major in philosophy. If you become philosopher major, philosophy major, then you're going to lose your faith. And I said, man, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard. You mean philosophy is stronger than Christ? Then I surely want to be study philosophy because I know Christ is stronger than any philosophy in the world. And I was right, right? And yet, there's this kind of bias against, where's the philosopher? Who's the scholar? Right? God is going to destroy philosophers and scholars of the world. No, that's not what he's saying. Right? Because the word wise, actually, in Greek is sophos. So philosopher means love of wisdom, sophos, sophos, right? You know why it's called sophomore? Because sophomore the second year in college, you become soft second year moron. Because <laughs> you think you know everything as sophomore. By junior, you humble. By senior, you become yourself. So anyways, <laughs> I said, wise. And, but do you know the trend? And, and this is something that I've been actually intrigued by the research that I was doing on global Christianity. And they just made it into one chart. I love this chart. It starts from 1900 and the trend reading. <clears throat> Can I tell you something about the trend? 
of Christian faith right now. The recording start from 1900, 122 years ago. <clears throat> 122 years ago. Okay. 1.6 billion people populate the earth. 1.6. Okay. Imagine that, okay. 1.6 billion. By 2050, there'll be 9.7 billion. Imagine that. 1970, there were 3.7 billion. We lived through most of 20, year 2000, 6.1 billion. By mid-2022, by June 2022, we're going to reach almost 8 billion. That is just mind-boggling, right? 8 billion. Why is it important? Because 1900 is the year that Christians got together at Edinburgh saying that we are confident we are going to finish the task of preaching the gospel to the ends of the world so Jesus will return. You know how many Christians were at Global North? 459 million. 459 million out of okay, Christian population of 558 million. Okay, let me repeat. <clears throat> Out of the 1.6 billion, 558 million were Christians in Global North. And how many Muslims lived? Only 200 million. 122 years ago. The dis difference between Christians and Muslims were far larger far larger Christian population. Guess what's going to happen? 2022, the Christian's population will become out of 8 billion, 2.5 billion, Muslim, 1.9 billion. By 2050, when there's going to be 10 billion people, 3.3 billion Christian, 2.8 billion Muslim. That's why they said the next war is going to be religious war. And the shift happened after Edinburgh said that we're going to preach the gospel, bring Jesus back. The World War I breaks out. And the very people, delegation that came all over the Europe, the young people who were there, they go back and they kill each other. That's the tragedy. And by the global south was only 79 million. There were 459 million Christians in global north. Global south was 79 million. Guess what? By mid 2020, there will be 837 million Christians in global north. Out of the 8 billion people, that's only 10%. But guess what? 1.72 billion Christians are got up from the global south. That's why they said the, there is a general shift of the Christianity. Even, even missional work is going to be done by global south, meaning China, Japan, Korea, Mexico, India, those countries. Global south. Wow. By <coughs> 2050, Two, global South will be 2.5 billion Christians and 772 million. So they're going to constantly decrease. That's why they said now there's a movement like, let's go back to Europe at gospel. Bring the gospel back to Europe. <laughs> Not back to Jerusalem. Let's back, go back to England. Go back to Europe because it's going crazy. Uh, on evangelized populations, still going to be at 28%, 2.7 billion. And the thing that is uh, interesting that started at zero at 1900 was usage of the radio, TV, and internet. So internet, TV, all that was at 1970, 700 million. And then by the time it hit 
us, it will be 2.3 billion people. 2.3 billion. So, um, as much as we think that the whole world is globalized and everybody's using the internet now, and you know, I, I, I was so upset by this young uh, missionary delegation from a lot, one of the largest church in America. And I, I know they mean well, but they came out and said, well, our senior pastor figured out the global mission and we put everything on the internet, just access it. He's so benevolent that he gave all his mission effort free of charge. So you could just download. And if you just do that, your country will be evangelized. That's what I call simpleton making a big claim that he really does not know what the hell he's talking about. So if global mission, mission globalization, if globalization of the mission was that simple because one largest church pastor came up with some dumb plan and then make it available to internet and everybody I'm like, raise hand. I'm like, sir, what, what happens if you don't have access to internet? You know, like 70%, all right. Um, so don't, don't have this attitude that, well, I have, I'm gonna read one book and that's enough for me, no. You gotta do more than that. Verse 21, for after that, the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Amen to that. And SAB 1, 1977 version says, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God. That's for sure. It is not science that brought Jesus to reality. No, God in his wisdom so folks was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached regarding salvation to save those who believe in Christ and welcome him as a savior. Wow. That was amplified version. Let me read that again. Amplified version. For since the world through all its earthly wisdom failed to recognize God. You say, and you say amen to that. Amen to that. I believe that. But that doesn't mean you shut it out because you're constantly thinking either or. Either this or that, either this or that. So you, when you're in that, in that mode, then okay, then I don't have to read books. I don't have to be smart. I don't have to become intellectual. I have to just poo poo on scholarship and I just, what research? Why do you do research? Just love Jesus, man, and preach the gospel. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> you know, we're talking about how to uh, plant a self sustainable church, not a dependent, and just. Supposedly, uh, one of the speakers said, well, I just prayed and love Jesus and plant church. That's all I do. I'm like, I understand what you're saying and I agree somewhat, but, but that's not what this is meeting is about. So what have you done? Can you have a data? How does it work in Cambodia that doesn't work in Thailand? And can we learn from each other as iron sharpen irons? Can we talk intellectually and, and reasonably? Oh, you just... You know, faith is not beyond common sense. Right? Faith doesn't fight against common sense. It's just beyond, right? And yet we, we really, I have so many instances where I meet these so-called Christian leaders or missionaries that act stupid and think that's how to live a life of faith. Do I believe that message is to preach the gospel, yes. But doesn't mean you have to become stupid. You could become intellectual, reasonable mind, talk about knowing how you know that you know, and defend your faith, even with the, the greatest philosopher who ever lived, because the greatest philosopher who ever lived is Jesus Christ himself. So when he talks about against the sophos, or the wisdom, he's not talking about Wise man, Jesus was the wisest man who walked on earth. So as a followers of Jesus Christ, please, the foolishness of preaching does not mean that you become foolish and become anti-intellectual in your life, this position. Don't become a Christian who claim, I only read one book, the Bible, and that's enough for me. I don't think so, right? Why do you think I do book a week club? 
that you could educate yourself. You could learn non-Christian books and see, I mean, just did a wake up book, you know, and I just finished a book by Patagonia, the founder of Patagonia, uh, the franchise. And I read that while I was in, in flight from LAX to Incheon and that 10 hour layover at the lounge. I finished the book and I'm ready to the book talk. And there are a lot to learn from the secular countries. I mean, he's so, you know, he's not Christian, of course. He talks about how um, the movement and philosophy, he talk, constantly talks about philosophy. He brings out all these philosophers. So I just want to challenge you, love Jesus, but don't become a fool. We are fool for Christ, not foolish. Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah.